in football, I think we'll be surprised at how well do, BYU does in five years. Really, I think once they're recruiting with Big Twelve badge on their on their on their hat and on their shoulders, when you have that calling cor- card, I think it's going to help. Now BYU still has got its restrictions; they're still not going to be able to get a certain. The honor code is always going to be in. Well, be there's problem. academic limitations as and well. Academic, like yeah. there's, yeah. there's some places that academic you're like, oh well, yeah, we can get you in. Don't worry about that. That still happens. Yep. That does not happen at BYU. Yep. I mean, we, you know, Blaine and I have talked, you know, many times about people that have been highly recruited uh, across the country that have got into schools. Won't mention names, but they've got into schools and and they couldn't get into some other schools. Yeah, we we and, in fact, there's been and we we don't mention names because we don't want to belittle anybody, but there's been. There have been some high-profile LDS athletes over the years that Dick and I know about, and you know about, Dave, that, that people come to us, and we're not going to de- degrade anybody either, right? So we're not going to comment, and even if we know, and they'll be like, I can't believe that BYU couldn't get that kid. All right? And the kid acts like he did, didn't even recruit him. And what we know behind the scenes is they don't have the academics or they don't, they're not a good fit. Um, but But a lot of times it's, Man, we we can go and the university can can take kids that maybe don't have a 4.0 and a 36 on their ACT, but they but they can't take below a certain level because they know that they won't survive with academic rigor here. They have a formula; they can project right. that you will not make it. Right, and so they just won't take those. And so then on the back end of that, we hear, well, BYU didn't even recruit this kid. They did a terrible job of recruiting. I mean, we'll talk behind the scenes and find out. It's like, well, guys, we love that kid. We want him in the program, but. We, we told him he either needed to go to a junior college and get his grades up and we'd take him back or sit out a year and take classes or do whatever. And another school just said, oh, we'll take you right now. We'll just make an exception. And that happens more than people know. And so BYU's, they're not going to compromise those standards, the academic standards, the honor code standards. And so they're not going to get every kid, right? Not even every LDS kid, right? Um but, but I think even with those limitations, what we're finding in recent years, I love what Kalani has said. He's publicly um, said, sometimes we look at those things as a detriment to recruiting. We need to turn that around. There are families out there that want their kids in a program that has these standards. And we need to make sure that those are the kids that we find, that we let them know that those are important things, that we're going to take care of them, that their kids are going to graduate, that they're going to get networked, that we're going to take care of them with NIL deals, not just the money we're going to give them when they're here, whether they get hurt or whatever. When they leave this place, they're going to have a network and they're going to be taken care of for the rest of their lives. Those are the kids that they need to recruit. And I feel like they're honing in on those kids. Some of these transfers they've gotten recently are big-time players, and that formula has worked to get those transfers. You know, I think it's a formula that Baylor's used in basketball, yeah. and they're they're now a top-five team. Yeah. Well, you look at BYU's all-time leading rusher, Jamal Williams, and then you just look at his mother. Absolutely. His mother bought into that whole thing yep. and said, you're going here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to yeah. go? You're going here. Yep. Well, and it wasn't easy for him, but he made it, and he got through it. And he thrived, and he left as the all-time leading rusher after a couple of speed bumps, and he just kept going. Tyler Algiel, look at his mother. Yeah. And she raised him by himself and his grandparents. Yeah, you got to recruit the families. you got to recruit the families.